So colleagues, welcome to the last session of the Global Entrepreneurship Week, Botswana 2021. We're happy to host Brighter Bridges. Uh, and we have Mr. Joshua Morima, uh, who is an expert in uh, issues of intelligence for uh, innovation maps, uh, innovation frameworks, angel investing. So these are the master heads behind any intelligence reporting that has to do with angel investing in Africa. We, we are so excited to have them here in assisting us to map you know, some of the work that is there in the continent, particularly in terms of uh, angel investment. We know there's about $3 billion that's going to startups. And he's here to help some of our startups understand basically like where the money is, where the money is coming from. Like also just try to map who are the founders in Botswana so that they can actually be linked to angel investors uh, and VCs. Uh, so um, the, the format of the, of the presentation is he's, he's gonna run uh, probably for 20, 30 minutes, just highlighting. And then from there, we can have a direct engagement, but feel free to interact in between. So um, Mr. Morima, just to let you know, we do have some founders that have been invited one to eight that might join during the call. Uh, so feel free to introduce yourself and go ahead and project. Thank you so much. Sure, thanks so much, Mo. Um, it's great to be here, great to you know, speak to uh, fellow folks from Botswana. My name is Joshua. Um, as duly introduced, I am based in Nairobi and I lead ecosystem engagement and investor relations at Brighter Bridges. Um, so let me start by sharing my screen. Um, a few seconds, uh, just a bit. Great. Um, again, once again, my name is Joshua and I lead ecosystem engagement at Brighter Bridges. Um, the discussion today will basically evolve around mapping out the state of you know, the tech space in, in the continent, uh, more specifically Southern Africa and Botswana, right? So we'll be trying to really understand how or what is um, the growth, um, what is uh, the current landscape in these spaces and how can we you know, position our local ecosystem uh, for growth in light of um, you know, the recent news that we've been seeing um, indicating massive uh, you know, growth and, 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 and that the African ecosystem has grown in, in leaps and bounds. So how do we then get to position our local ecosystems um in Botswana uh and and you know put it up for success um in light of all the interest um that we've been seeing in the continent but before we do that um I'd like to get a bit more deeper or, or provide a bit better context into what we do at Brighter so um as as Bo mentioned we you know try to showcase uh, the good work that founders, um, investors, and other innovation stalwarts have been doing in the continent. Um, and we've been notorious for quite a, a number of maps um, that have been going around the ecosystem just you know, with an idea to, again, um, highlight uh, you know, underserved markets, right? So we've been doing this by way of visualizations, literal maps, um, infographics. Um, that have gotten a life of their own. And, you know, we've grown to a point where we seem to be uh, kind of the go-to resource when it comes to uh, mapping out um, ecosystems, right? Um, so we produce regular publications, um, the most recent being um, an angel investing in Africa report that again, mapped out the angel investing um, ecosystems in the continent, um, looking at, uh, you know, demographics of angel investors, what they care about, um, the criteria, the ticket sizes and all of that. 
um, drawing contributions from more than um, 100 uh, you know, angel investors and, and practitioners in the continent, um, highlighting the work that more than 100 syndicates as well have been doing in the continent. We have also produced um, an Africa investor catalog, um, a literal catalog that also highlights um, the contribution that some of the key institutional investors in the continent have been making, right? Um, again, highlighting um, their characteristics, be it by, by way of you know, uh, their ticket sizes, the sector of focus, impact focus, geographical focus, um, et cetera. Uh, we produce the Africa Investment Report, uh, which is the investment report um, that has been relied upon by, you know, um, innovation stakeholders um, from DFIs to investors to um, founders to, to, you know, the tech media around. And we are already in the process of, uh, you know, building um, one, um, this, this year's edition, that is the Africa Investment Report 2021. Um, and we're looking forward to, you know, sharing findings um, at the end of this year, that, um, that is um, um, in, in late December or even early January. Um, we have or operate an intelligence platform called Brexit Intelligence, which you know, works really to democratize access to information and data, right? We um, are trying to build um, the knowledge infrastructure uh, relating to, you know, venture capital, innovation, technology, and business um, in the continent. And writer intelligence will be your go-to resource uh, um, in the eventual case that you would want to um, sort of understand what is happening within the ecosystem, right? Um, this platform is largely free, so feel free to to log in and sign in and 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 you know uh, make use of the platform. Now back to the discussion um, for the day. We will start by looking at you know the larger ecosystem trends or the larger innovation and technology investment trends in the continent, right? So uh, as Mo mentioned, uh, we are actually at more than 4 billion being deployed. Um, and what we see is that uh, the amounts of investment that have been made in the continent have grown you know, four times, right? Um, at such a time last year, we were almost uh, at $1 billion um, in VC money being involved, uh, being deployed in the continent. Um, and you know, uh, there was some sort of a bottleneck really because of COVID of course, um, and part of the reason as why we are also seeing, you know, this massive amounts being invested now is uh, because of, you know, li new liquidity that, you know, was, was locked uh, again because of COVID, the uncertainty that, you know, COVID sort of, uh, you know, brought during, um, in 2020. Um, so investors are now sort of deploying that liquid money that was sort of locked during that period. Uh, secondly, we are starting to see more and more success stories, more and more ex exit scenarios, and you know, increased coverage of African startups. Right, um, the global media is shining a spotlight on on the continent. Uh, we are seeing an increase of you know foreign investors who are you know trying to participate in deals in the continent. Right, um, and this is all to say that. Um, this is sort of feeding into uh, the massive, you know, uh, funding amounts that have been deployed to African startups um, in the year 2021 today, right? Um, and as to sectors, we, we're seeing that, you know, fintech still leads um, because of the relative uh, sort of scale at which, you know, products within um, the sector sort of um, are attributable to, right? So we, we see that uh, um, the most funded products uh, within the ecosystem, the tech ecosystem, the continent have uh, been attributable to uh, an element of, you know, financial access and inclusion, right? When looking at payments, um, even uh, aspects of uh, the likes of clean tech, uh, pay as you go, 
um, has some sort of a, you know, a, a fintech or financial technology element to it, right? Um, and we are seeing more products that are of an embedded nature, right? And, and bring some sort of interoperability between sectors. So for example, you know, financial technology and, and, and you know, renewables, financial technology and agriculture, uh, say crowdfunding for farming. Um, um, this is in a nutshell uh, where we are seeing a more um, investment focus, right? Um, as to geographical, um, you know, orientation, we, we see Nigeria to, to, you know, to lead uh, really, um, and and we discovered from the recent angel investing report that is you know publicly available on our website brasherbridges.com that you know Nigeria um, partly has um, you know, one of the most strongest diaspora um, communities, right? And you know the diaspora community is a key source for you know angel funding, right? And in a way. Um, this contributes to you know, the growth of the availability of, of capital for founders um, who operate in, in that particular geography. Secondly, um, we see more you know, sort of local funds in Nigeria, local funds, we see more um, local syndicates and investment clubs that are you know, putting money in, into uh, you know, startups in Nigeria. Right, and also arguably, uh, it's a it's a it's a huge market really, um, and this has been touted um, quite a number of time, and on again. Um, as to stages, uh, we see more activity um, at the pre precede and seed stages. Though when it comes to volumes, um, you know this, um, you know shifts to the latter stages at Series A, B, and C. Um, of course some of the biggest deals have happened at later stages um you know looking at the likes of uh, you know cheaper cash uh you know or pay uh trigger foods most recently at series c uh but in terms of activity you know we are seeing it uh, to be happening at the at the precedent seed stages which is quite motivating because um in any case we need uh, a big enough pipeline uh, of you know funded early stage companies that are ready to um, attract, you know, follow on funding, right? We are also seeing founders participating as angels, you know, backing other founders. So really, um, you know, uh, the participation of uh, much more seasoned, um, largely successful founders, you know, such, that, such as the founders at CUDA, um, you know, Paystack, uh, Flutterweb, um, there's a you know running joke that uh, GB uh, is perhaps uh, present in most cap tables in, in in fintechs in the continent, and and that really tells you uh, the amount of uh, influence that you know founders can have in terms of supporting other founders that are sort of below them, so to speak. Uh, again, as mentioned, we're seeing the rise of uh, you know investment clubs and, and syndicates, right? So. Um, there has been this sort of conception that um, angels are, you know, ultra high net worth individuals, you know, very rich people. Um, but what we're saying is that, uh, you know, the syndicates are lowering the barriers, they're democratizing the access to, to, to you know, investment opportunities, especially for, you know, working professionals who might not really have the big budgets, but have um, an understanding of the VC markets and also have uh, you know, uh, a portion of the salaries and wages to spare, right? So we are seeing kind of the growth of these syndicates to also fuel um, you know, the growth of, of uh, the amount of, uh, or the sources of capital that are available to funders all across the continent. Now, um, you know, looking at South Africa, you know, spotlighting on South Africa, uh, uh, Southern Africa, sorry. So South Africa is, uh, you know, sort of uh, really the leading market Southern, uh, in Southern Africa, right? Um, so we we see that, you know, uh, you know, quite a number of companies operating in South Africa have raised significant amounts of uh, funding. Um, you know, most, most recently, Jumo, um, you know, with the funding round, 
um, and this has sort of uh, overshadowed um, you know the other countries, right? Uh, we're also seeing quite significant uh, you know deal volumes in, in Mauritius, but this is largely because quite a number of uh, you know the Pan African companies are registered or domiciled in Mauritius, right? So this is not really representative uh, of of kind of the market opportunity there, but more of uh, the the compliance sort of and registration um, you know avenues that Mauritius offers to you know companies operating in the continent. Um, and and at, at the third spot, we we see you know sort of uh, activity in Zambia, um, arguably because uh, of the likes of uh, of of, of you know, Zazu, uh, Union 54, who, you know, uh, recently joined YC. Um, and, and this is sort of adding a bit more value into um, the standing that Zambia has in the, uh, you know, VC landscape all across the continent, right? Um, inter interestingly, uh, the DRC is sort of fourth, but, uh, you know, this amount of funding Pretty much went to one company that is Nuru that was funded funded by Propaco, right? Um, so that might really be considered as an outlier. Now onto Botswana, uh, you know, the uh, Botswana is a quite an ascent market, uh, but we are actually seeing you know gradual growth, um, and and. Um, the reality is that most of the startups operating in Botswana are, you know, operating in rather impacty, you know, sort of sectors, right? You know, looking at post management, um, um, looking at, uh, you know, access to, to, you know, clean sources of, 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 of energy and all of that, um, unless in what we see to be the high growth sectors such as fintech. Um, and, and a classic case will be the lack of AFAL Direct that closed up, uh, recently closed up pre seed round of um, 600K dollars um, from Launch Africa Ventures. So um, if a company in, Zam uh, in, in Botswana um, operates within these high growth sectors, then um, it's likely for it to also close um, you know, significant uh, amount of funding from external investors that are not even present in in Botswana, right? Um, and and kind of the VC investment space is, is gradually growing as well. Um, most recently, we have uh, you know, the likes of uh, the, the Botswana Angel Network that were, was set up, um, I think, in 2020. So that's a, a motivating factor, especially for um, you know, founders operating there that need, you know, some sort of early stage capital. Um, Launch Africa invested in Alpha, Alpha Direct. They have a Pan-African focus, uh, not really based in Botswana. Um, and uh, we see uh, a couple more, you know, VC funds um, that are based in Botswana uh, that also look at opportunities um, all across, uh, you know, the Southern African region, right? Then as to the availability of ecosystem support, um, you know, we are seeing, you know, uh, organizations such as the Botswana Innovation Hub, you know, the Global Entrepreneurship Network, um, you know, Dream Factory, the Neo Hub, you know, cropping up to really um, improve the capacity of, of, you know, founders in the continent, uh, in, 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 in Botswana rather. Um, helping them again access to um, have access to you know uh, proper uh, you know preparation and planning as they even think about the fundraising journeys. Um, so we we see this to be a, a motivation factor and a catalyzing factor really to you know helping um, the ecosystem grow a bit more and 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 you know unlock um, the capital that it needs. Um, so just to close off, um, what we think will sort of be of you know, value really, um, or that X factor to unlock the growth that you know, companies uh, or startups uh, and founders in Botswana sort of will need is one, uh, build with kind of the Pan-African market in mind, right? So you're not really building 
um, for Gaborone or uh, you know your local community, but you're you're building a product for for the entire continent, right? And this is because you know uh, investors largely evaluate companies based on the markets that they serve, right? So if you say that hey you're building for Botswana, then um, you know your your growth. Uh, trajectory might really be be seen to be limited to Botswana, right? Whilst you know you have the whole mass of the fifty six countries that you can actually build for, right? Secondly, um, um, we believe that uh, you know an increase in in terms of focus in in you know high growth sectors, um, and this is uh, to say you know say B two B fintech uh, will also unlock you know. Uh, more capital, more interest from, especially from uh, international or external investors. Um, we believe that this will also uh, increase sort of the exposure that um, you know the local founders have in Botswana. Um, and finally, uh, we believe that uh, the creation of, of, of angel networks, um, local angel networks, that is, will sort of also unlock the growth. Um, and case in point, I would like to draw kind of inspiration from, from the likes of uh, Thriver Africa Capital um, Hawk Club in Nigeria that are really democratizing and cutting down on, on you know, uh, the barriers to sort of um, local angel capital in the sense that, um, you know, literally anyone can, can, can be an angel investor, yeah, right? I mean, for as low as, say, $1,000. Right and and unlocking this type of capital, especially from from working professionals in Botswana who have an understanding of how you know VC works, uh, will be instrumental. Right. Um, so yeah, back to you, Mo. Um, and and I'm happy to take questions. Happy to to hear uh, you know what um, the the innovation community um, in Botswana thinks. Thanks. Hey, Mo. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here, uh, Joshua. Yeah, I saw colleagues. I think maybe they got disconnected. Uh, no, OK. Yeah, so but in simple terms, I mean, what is the message to the Botswana founder in simple terms out of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. I mean, good question. So one build for the pan-african market right um so don't be be limited by your your country's borders right build for the pan-african market go out there and say that hey i'm actually building um you know the next whatever for africa right i'm based in botswana i'm from botswana but really the product that i'm building is for the continent right then um, have a way of communicating your product in light of, again, and try to relate it to the high growth sectors, right? So um, try to also kind of build a product that can easily or, or you know, most flexibly play within, within sectors, right? So uh, you might be you know, building a, a clean technology solution or a um, you know, waste management solution. Um, is there a way of building some sort of um, embeddedment to other high growth sectors, right? And, and by high growth sectors, I mean like FinTech, right? So is there a way of really uh, unlocking financial access within the sector that you're building your product in? So for example, if, if you're building a waste collection, uh, you know, platform or, or product, then how do you uh, get to build customer journeys um, with regards to you know finances in waste collection, right? How do you help uh, waste collection agencies measure or even uh, you know manage um, their revenues, right? So um, those aspects uh, we see them sort of unlocking 
um, you know, working very well to, to unlock capital for, for even founders who are building, um, you know, products in sectors that are seen to be somewhat underfunded, right? So those are the two key messages that I will, I will share with, with, you know, founders in Botswana, really. So build um, with a Pan-African mind, right? So don't really be limited to your local geography. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because we've got only two, 2 million people in Botswana, right? So uh, the market is really yep. large here. Uh, it's a sandbox here. So yeah, it's a, it's a really small sandbox. It's a, it's a test bed. I think Botswana is almost like Estonia, you know? Uh, Estonia has mastered the art of just testing and building for the world. Israel has done that. Singapore is doing that. But anyway, I see one of my co my uh, cohort members who's here, Kariso from SRIT Insight. He actually loves data, this guy. So he's got like uh, some stuff he does on a Sunday morning for fun just to wake up the whole city. And But also he's building a company called SRIT Insights. So Kariso, mm -hmm. I don't know, man, this looks like something that's within your bandwidth. I don't know what you want to say to uh, Joshua because I, I, I need him to map Siriti into what you're doing. And the cook-off, of course, right? <laughs> Yeah, so not sure if he's uh, still with us, um, but of course happy to, you know, sort of explore avenues through which we can really showcase what's happening on the ground in, in, in Botswana, 100%. Um, yeah. Kagisu? Yeah, maybe, maybe he's still uh, a little bit engaged or something. So, but my, my sense is to, I think because we have the one to eight founders, right? Mm. I would want us to sort of create a tool that would allow them to map uh, what they're doing uh, in simple terms. Then we can translate that into, hey, look, is this something that can be linked or not? Because the one challenge that I've always seen is nobody has any idea like who's building what in Botswana. If you look at right. the maps that you guys always produce, like around mm -hmm. the, the different sectors, right? You almost yeah. see Zambia, Zimbabwe, and then when you look closely into Botswana, you can't find anything. But right. with what we have, for example, we've got founders in the ad tech space, we've got founders in the, uh, you know, clean tech space, uh, mm. you know, all the different sectors, right? So it's a great opportunity to spotlight them so that at least even, even, even I mean, I have a meeting this afternoon with one of the investors. He's looking at one of the fintechs in this cohort. The first thing they do is they, they look up on the on the internet <laughs> if you actually exist right and they were like who's this guy that's in the, they've got a banking license how come they're not anywhere right so that just raises eyebrows so it's very important that these guys appear into these data intelligence reports because it actually validates like you you're doing something and i'm happy at least with Kariso and Seriti guys like i was telling them like me finding them was very easy because they've actually been picked by by JICA. You know, JICA is doing a project in Africa around startups and all that. And, and that's a strong right. validation that already what they're building is, is out there in the market, right? So they don't need like to be Googled and all that. If they if, if, a, if a strong GFI like JICA can pick up a startup, that means they've done their due diligence. So the next guy doesn't need to repeat the process of, hey, look, what village do you come from? What city? What product are you building? They can just easily pick your insights and then you guys just focus on the, on the investment, yeah? So, so I think that's that that's just my thinking on this uh, to see what what we can do. Yeah, I see Kariso is back up with two devices. Kariso, do you want to interject there? Yeah, I think maybe he's having like issues. He keeps going in and out. Yeah, so tell me, uh, Joshua, like in terms of mapping what's happening in Botswana in terms of the ecosystem, like how would a partnership with a project like that be done? Like, because it's, it's hard to tell people like ecosystem mapping is important. I mean, right now I work with the World Bank and just trying to advise. I work with the corporate bank called Stambeck Bank. They are the ones actually financing this, this week as campaign, right? But people's mm -hmm. always, they're always like, not happy to pay like for data mapping. What they don't understand is intelligence reports are very, very important. Like you need to know like just how many incubators are doing what in what particular sector. 
Like how many mm-hmm. angels do you actually, and what average ticket sizes are they actually writing, right? So, and this is a mission that I think for the gen community, right? The global entrepreneurship network community that I look after, right? We would certainly be very excited on how to collaborate with you on just like just giving like a rough idea of what's on the ground in Botswana, right? Because I think currently we're sitting on like 10,000 entrepreneurs on our on our network. Oh, well. Yeah, we, we are. The data is there. Like, so these are guys that just sign up and say, hey, we just want to, I'm an entrepreneur and whatever. So yeah, but I want to put this in a graphical way such that like people really understand who's where and who's doing what, right? So that when I tell people like, hey, look, you've got too many accelerators and incubators, but there's few entrepreneurs. So the data should be able to speak for itself, right? I don't know like how, how you see us lending something like that. Absolutely. Like, that's why we are here. <laughs> um, and as I started by saying that uh, we you know, exist to showcase ecosystems, right? Especially underserved ecosystems, right? So there is a reason as to why there is you know, huge growth in terms of funding in the continent. It's because the outside world is sort of paying attention on the continent, right? Because of an increased availability of data as to success stories, et cetera, right? more and more is being do- documented. And this was not the case, say, three years, five years ago, right? So there's increased media coverage, there's increased kind of, uh, you know, data provision, you know, people like us that are trying to, to pretty much uh, build digestible pieces of content and, you know, data uh, for the masses, right? So absolutely happy to partner and, uh, you know, Innovation hubs, uh, the local support ecosystem players are uh, a partner to Brighter at any given time. Uh, we have done ecosystem maps for 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 you know places all the way to Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, and I don't see a reason as to why we should not do one for for Botswana, right? You know, so absolutely happy to partner um, and you know put out what is really happening in Botswana, right? So hundred percent, and I, I can assure you that you know with all these spotlights in the local innovations ecosystem in Botswana, uh, things are going, will pretty much change, right? So, and, and, and as a given, um, investors, even before deploying capital, they, they'd like to know what's happening, right? So, you know, any business decision, any investment decision um, is made from a point of knowledge, right? So when the knowledge and the fa- uh, familiarity is not there, then, you know, there are inherent risks that are involved, right? And you know the availability of knowledge and information, you know, the risks, all this, right? So uh, absolutely happy to 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 you know find ways, be it an innovation map, uh, to really showcase um, the innovators, the, the founders um, on the ground in Botswana. So what what's the simplest tools that would need to be done in terms of founders? I mean, I think for for the innovation, uh, you know, we can always like, because we already have like an Excel full of that. So that, that can be sent to you uh, yeah. after this call. So in terms of uh, great founders doing tech, like would, what would be the process? Would they need to like submit pitch decks or do we just use profiling of like, like so, the flag yeah. effect basically? Yeah, so let me actually share my screen so that you can pro- uh, pretty much see what, uh, you know, I, I usually mean by, by, you know, brighter intelligence. Right intelligence is really an open platform, right? Uh, you know, we are trying to build sort of the rails, uh, really trying to build um, the knowledge infrastructure when it comes to 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 you know the tech ecosystem in Africa, right? Uh, and as you can see from from the interface, right, we have this button that that says literally add company or fund, right? Um, so with this, we try to to crowdsource. Um, and, and in a way also showcase uh, by way of crowdsourcing, you know, the, the founders that are doing great things in the continent. So, you know, uh, you know uh, once you, you, you click that button, you'll be led to, to an interface where you get to sort of feel um, all that pertains to your company, right? Be it your company name, uh, you know, um, set it to active, of course, um, you know, the, the category of your company, of course, it should be a company not a hub or investor, um, you know, the ownership structure, et cetera. Um, and all this is, um, you know, voluntary, right? So it's not that uh, we, we ask for confidential information that you, you as a founder are sort of 
um, are comfortable to share. So we, we just try to spotlight what you're, uh, you're, you're, you're comfortable with, right? Um, so one of the tabs here is the, the docs tab where a founder can actually add their pitch deck, right? Um, and, and that will give them again, the chance to, to add any marketing material that you know they want the world to really know out here, right? And one of the most interesting features is sort of the market feature, which also tries to really, um, it acts as a, as, a, as a competitor analysis tool for, for a founder, right? So if I can actually go to one, one profile, um, so that I show you how it pretty much works. So this this works as a um, as a tool for founders to to uh, you know strategize build even their investment uh, you know CRMs and and and, and strategies around their investment roadshows know which investors global or or African Pan African investors you know focus on the verticals focus on the sectors are, and are within their ticket sizes um, and as as I said you know the market analysis tab you know helps founders to really you know, build their, 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 their competitor analysis slides, right, on their pitch decks, right? So for example, you can know who else is doing what you're doing uh, within your product lines in the, in the, um, locally, that is within your countries, or internationally, that is within other countries in the continent, right? Um, so British intelligence is really open source um, and pretty much free, right? So um, I will uh encourage founders in Botswana to really use this resource um and you know reach out directly to us or or, or, or through more in case of any concerns and in case of any questions yeah i think i think what we're gonna do is pick up an action to get all the founders in our cohort to mm. fill out that form um it'll be great to see what report gets generated mm. out of that and what leads can actually come out in terms of uh, investment, right? Because most of them are doing it so that they can they can raise revenue. What? Yeah. So just coming to uh, the other parts of the maps in the region, like how do you see us leveraging the other maps in the region uh, as a form of attracting uh, investment? Because like we can't we can't avoid Cape Town, if you understand, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, to be to be to be honest, uh, uh, quite a number of the investors that have come through, uh, have come across, um, have a, a, a rather Southern African SADAC focus, right? Um, so, of course, yes, you can afford Cape Town, uh, but in terms of the sources of capital, for sure, uh, you'll find investors who are sort of knowledgeable about the Southern African region, especially if you want to, as a founder, want to like test up the market first and, and before launching um, in the Pan-African arena, right? You'll, you'll find investors who, you know, understand um, the realities of the Southern African region. So um, it will definitely be kind of the first step in terms of um, even um, investment roadshows and all of that. Right. Um, then probably it will be uh, a good geography to sort of uh, you know find partnerships in terms of ecosystem partnerships because again not only in the investor side we, we find that uh, you know quite a number of the support programs right um, are also uh, based in Cape Town or or, or Joburg have again this pan Southern African um, sort of focus right um, so it will be um, a logical step really to, 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 to start uh, uh, by sort of exploring partnerships with, with kind of the guys who operate in Cape Town um, and, 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 and try to use that to sort of leapfrog frog, um, you know, the developments that have been happening um, in, in, in Botswana. Um, and, and from kind of an, an overall exit you know, strategy, you know, what we see is that, uh, you know, quite a number of startups that operate in, in Cape Town would like to expand to, uh, you know, the United States, right? However, in, in, the, in the unlikely case that they would like to expand within the continent, then Southern Africa is usually a, uh, a logical sort of uh, expansion point for them, right? So, um, you know, networking opportunities with, with you know, entrepreneurs in, in, in Joburg and in, in Cape Town are, are, you know, sort of the right thing to do because they create um, this sort of uh, familiarity within founders um, 
um, who operate in Botswana and those who operate in Cape Town in the sense that whenever the, uh, you know, the, the founders in Cape Town would like to sort of expand in the region, then of course it creates some sort of avenues for consolidation by way of acquisition um, of you know, local operators in Botswana. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, sorry, uh, today I'm a fatherpreneur, so I have to manage <laughs> two things at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So let's speak a bit about the map, the innovation map that you spoke about. So mm -hmm. you know, there's a there's a worry in terms of just like the number, the, the speed at which check sizes are going to founders in the region. How do mm -hmm. we influence that type of uh, Silicon Valley type of approach where? You get your check signed up very fast. How do we influence that in Botswana? Um, one, I mean, leveraging individual investors, right? So individual investors sort of uh, are, are much more quicker to deploy, of course. I mean, looking at um, comparing them to institutional investors, be it like VCs and, 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 and so forth, they have kind of set models of Arandi that they have to follow, be it you know, investment committees and all that. And that takes uh, a bit of time, right? Um, so one, incentivizing sort of angel investing by way of syndicates. Um, and, 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 and these syndicates ideally would um, sort of bring in the, the investment power of kind of working professionals. Again, because it's hard to, to find kind of the super rich guys, right? So why not, uh, you know, involve you know, working professionals in Botswana to sort of participate as angels, right? Um, and and of course, if if you get to demonstrate that these products will grow really fast all across the continent, then um, that is usually a good uh, you know story to tell, especially when you're trying to attract you know angels, right? So that's a way to 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 quickly um you know to to really increase the uh, the deployment speeds um, a second way is usually by all formal right fear of missing out right uh, but for uh, an, a, a very early uh, you know species botswana is it's really hard to create that formal especially because one um you know you have quite limited number of numbers of kind of uh, you know proven entrepreneurs right um, so, you know, finding ways of kind of bringing in that fear of missing out effect will also um, increase the deployment speed, right? But uh, for, for, for uh, you know, it's a given that, uh, you know, individual, individual investors get to move much more quickly. So if, you know, you have a good uh, foundation of kind of syndicates and local investment clubs, then uh, that will catalyze um, you know, the speed at which, you know, the investments are being made. Yeah, good point. I mean, so I was talking to guys from Lofty Capital. They spoke the same thing, like, hey, look, Botswana has a wealthy, affluent community. Um, it only makes sense that a lot of the corporates, like, sort of start getting interested into angel investing. And I think the lesson here is possibly there needs to be a series of masterclasses around, uh, you know, what is angel investing? Like, how do you how do you leverage like tech startups as, as the new stock market, right? Like, so that people just stop like buying houses. Cause like the, there's just a traditional way of investing here in this market. These, I don't think there's a shortage of capital in Botswana, uh, especially like just from the citizen, citizens who are like maybe in the corporate sector. Uh, it might be just, they have the zero education or limited education around like what, what can you, what other alternatives do you have in terms of investing? I mean, I had a friend who joined one of those sessions this week and she was like, hey, look, I, I, I wanna go like get into property. And, and one of the investors went like, do you do understand that's like highly capital in terms of requires patience, right? Why don't you just take your money and invest in like 10 startups per year? Like you might just bet in the future cause you might get like your 10 return, your return in 10 X and you might get better retirement, right? <laughs> and uh, you, because you're looking for a pension from what I'm seeing, right? And she was just like so confused. And I just, I had to have a deep dive with her and say, hey, look, I think you, what you're saying is you wanna, you wanna transition into an angel investor, but you don't understand what it is. So I think we should actually pick that KPI of like, who are the corporates in Botswana that could ultimately like be, be like enticed into like 
some form of like a platform where they can, I know like Victoria Angels is doing that in Kenya where they run a series of these, in Kigali the same, in Cape Town there's they something like this. And that's why Cape Town is so active, right? Uh, there's a blend just between the guys with the money and the guys building. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's clear what we need to do. Yeah. So then the other thing I was gonna ask is, um, obviously, you know, Botswana being where it is, being like in the middle of uh, the desert, as I, as I like to say it, but being landlocked to Namibia, to Zimbabwe, Zambia, you know, and South Africa, how how do we leverage? that opportunity in terms of just scaling our ventures. But obviously, would, would the advantage be, hey, look, attract uh, VC firms to come and set up in Botswana and then look at have a regional outlook? Or would it be attract the best startups from the region to come and just leverage your, your country's advantage, good governance, good policy, you know, and just have like a startup, you know, startup friendly ecosystem, if, if you say it, right? Well, I don't know what your thought is on. So really, I think it's um, how the market typically operates is by web demand, right? So um, what is the case for world class or any, any, any class of investors to sort of set up in, in Botswana? Is it just because of um, kind of a good investment uh, environment in terms of regulation? Not quite. Um, they usually set up shop because of convenience right convenience because um a huge uh you know component of the portfolio is within the region so and um a considerable portion of their work is is actually portfolio management so it's just good to have a, a local office yeah or secondly uh one of the key mandates is um, actually to source for local innovations and invest in them, right? So, um, and, and in that case, then it will be good for them to like set, set local um, offices um, that will, you know, sort of catalyze the availability of, of pipeline to invest in, right? It's it's rarely because of, of kind of a, you know, incentive that are sort of set up for, for investors, right? Because it's, uh, these incentives are usually um, to, uh, kind of catalyze the availability of capital for for you know, local investors, local investments as compared to like regional um, or international investments, right? So I'd like to think of it from a demand perspective, right? Um, have uh, you know a good set of pipeline or, or, or deal flow or of kind of you know a high potential. You know startups that are operating in 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 Botswana or even in neighboring countries, right? Uh, with that, we will you will see even international investors who we, we typically call you know uh, flying fly out investors, you know putting in money, right? So and this will be because they sort of believe in the overall growth trajectory or potential of these companies that that are existing in these markets, right? So there is typically no reason or no incentives for, for, for uh, investors to like set up local shop, right? And, and as a reality, um, a considerable component or even the majority of the investors who deploy capital in the continent are international investors who don't even care about setting up you know, offices locally, right? They only care about investing in startups, which will capture huge market sizes. Right, be it in Botswana or even in, in neighboring countries. Yeah, super awesome. So regulation doesn't matter, policy doesn't matter. What matters, what matters is uh, convenience for the investor, right? And scale and scale and scale scalability, right? I mean yeah, scalability, scalability. Well, regulation matters for you know on the startup side, right? So of course, if um, the regulation, uh, the current regime um, is a bit uh, uh, you know, prohibitory to startups, then of course that uh, feeds into the kind of investor confidence um, and, and climate to, to actually invest, right? But, you know, uh, regulation that touches on investors doesn't really, yeah, I don't think it really matters, right? Because investors will still find a way to put in capital in, in you know, high growth cost, uh, startups. But 
But look at this. Look at this way, Joshua. I mean, in simple terms, I was listening to Abu Yeji, uh, you know, you, the one who built uh, Flutterwave and Adela, uh, mm -hmm. the, the first two unicorns in Africa. I don't know if they're the first two, but I know they came out of Lagos. And he was asked this morning, like, do you think tech should be regulated, right? So I don't know what do you what do you what is your thought on that like that how and how do you regulate tech right <laughs> like um and how do you how do you also regulate like tech investment right because there's just like a lot of this money coming in from around the world going into tech and it's, it's people's private money like right and you're not gonna tell like a family office like what to do with their private money like. So like, how do we, how do we, how do we answer that? Like, I'm, I'm curious though, right? Because for example, I just, Botswana was recently blacklisted by the EU because of some issues. Then all mm. of a sudden I couldn't, like my bank account in Germany got shut down, right? I couldn't like, mm. yeah, I couldn't access my money and I couldn't just do anything. Like, but now it's, it's been removed. That means that a Botswana citizen can open a business account in the EU. So people didn't understand that. So I'm curious about tech, like, do you want to regulate companies like Twitter, Facebook, but also like the, the, the local ones, like, you know, the m -Pesas and like, at what point do you say you must regulate, right? Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is a pertinent question, like regulation. I think the reality is that uh, the biggest bottleneck to, to startups and innovation has been regulation, right? But it's from a, a journey, genuine point of view, because regulation exists to protect the masses right so how do you get to protect the population from unscrupulous sort of tech entrepreneurs who are there to make a big buck and just run away right so in the in light of that i will think that uh, you know tech should be regulated but limited to you know areas such as consumer protection and such a view, right? Some of the, the, the regulations that currently exist, especially within the financial technology space, are from a point of, you know, just uh, suspicion, right? Or just, um, uh, you know, a, a point of, uh, um, how do I say, of, uh, you know, misinformation and, and the lack of knowledge of really how things work, right? Uh, but uh, generally, much more broadly speaking, tech should be regulated on a consumer perspective, because the, the whole overall purpose of regulation is really to, to make sure that the um, unsuspecting public is not swindled, right? Um, so yeah, and, and, and I agree that uh, there has been this conversation and debate on kind of the level of, of regulation in the continent, but uh, most of it, um, the regulation that is happening is again uh, unfounded on, on on a kind of facts or you know true intentions, right? Uh, most of it is just because of sort of the the fear of you know uh, of disruption uh, of incumbents by by you know tech innovators, right? So um, you know if that uh, if that is the type of uh, you know regulation that happens, then definitely it's unwarranted. Yeah, thanks a lot, Joshua, for that session. Uh, let me just say we have reached the one hour mark. Uh, on behalf of the Global Entrepreneurship Week, let me thank Joshua Murima from Brighter Bridges for making the time. I think the actions are quite clear. Uh, we're gonna work on, um, on an ecosystem map for Botswana together with Brighter Bridges. We'll also work on a startup founder, well, tech uh, startups um, founder intelligence report. Uh, we'll try to get the founders to fill in this as fast as possible so that we can produce some intelligence report which can be used to influence, like just to put Botswana on the map with the rest of the other startups, right? Hopefully this helps the founders attract the necessary investment that they need. Uh, obviously as well, this adds value into the work of Brighter Bridges and the Botswana startup ecosystem, yeah. So uh, Mr. Murima, we want to Thank you for making time. And just to officially say, uh, this session has been recorded on the Global Entrepreneurship Week. 
Botswana Facebook page. Uh, feel free to go there and share it with your team. Uh, we also like have support of the corporate bank being Standard Bank. So feel free to tag them on all the platforms, including LinkedIn. Uh, and also, obviously, we've had a great week. So you were just here to conclude our week. Our week started off on a Monday with the launch of the week. And we had partners uh, from Tuesday on um, Go Fresh. We had partners like Smart Africa. We had partners like um, the MasterCard Foundation. We had Lofty Capital. We had the World Bank Group. We had the Laura Center. We had the Republic of Estonia. We had the German Embassy. We had Startup Namibia. We had uh, GIZ, we had Make It in Africa, we had the German Chamber of Commerce for Southern Africa. We had uh, EO organization, Bahrain, and EO organization, the international one. We also had Amazon Web Services uh, for startups from Cape Town. We also today had Brighter Bridges uh, who concluded today's program. So as you can imagine, like we had a really, really, really heavy week and a really heavy, um, you know, collaborative uh, space for startups founders. Most of them are tired. You know, they were they were doing like three sessions a day. So uh, they and they prefer to just like go back to their businesses. So what happens next week is we do actually we act on the follow ups or the KPIs. Uh, and that's 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 the key thing out of this week. And we try to also share with the community what has been the outcome. So let me thank Stanbeck Bank, uh, Botswana being our corporate sponsor for this year's GW but also for launching with us the three by three scale up residency program, which is aiming to be a replicatable uh, model for how you support early stage founders in Botswana to be investor ready and to go to market. So we appreciate all the global networks that have come in and our, spons our sponsors, our local sponsors for the infrastructure being Abaricom, your internet connectivity partner in Botswana for providing the internet uh, and of course, yeah, finally, to thank my key host, Mr. Joshua Murima, for concluding this year's GEW. And we anticipate that when we invite him next time, and next time might be a physical visit to Haburoni, <laughs> and we'll be happy to eat some beef. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Happy, yeah. happy to, to visit, man. Yeah. All right. All right, colleagues, uh, the session um, will now be concluded. Feel free to share. Feel free to reach out at uh, genglobal.org. Feel free to reach out at Moana Africa uh, on all the social platforms, um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You, you know where to find me, right? So yeah, so colleagues, let me conclude the GW 2021 for Botswana and say this has been a great celebration uh -huh. of entrepreneurship around the world. 190 plus countries, 40,000 events. We're making impact. So goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Mr. Maruma. Bye.